What if you could take 110 trucks off the road with a single train? Not just any train. A two kilometer long freight monster, double stacked with containers, thundering across the continent at 115 kilometers per hour. This isn't some far off futuristic dream. This is the $31 billion gamble Australia is taking right now. It's called the Inland Rail, and it's one of the most ambitious, controversial, and desperately needed engineering projects in the nation's history. Why the massive gamble? Because Australia is a continent defined by distance, and its entire freight network, the system that delivers your food, your fuel, and your goods, is at a breaking point. For decades, the lifeblood of the nation's freight has been the truck, an endless convoy of road trains moving everything along highways that are becoming more congested, more expensive, and a massive source of carbon emissions. With Australia's population set to hit 40 million by 2050, this system is failing. The nation needs a bigger, smarter, and greener solution. The Inlon Rail is that solution. The vision is to build a 1,600-kilometer steel spine connecting two of the country's largest cities, Melbourne and Brisbane, right through the regional heartland. This isn't just another infrastructure project. We're talking about a dedicated freight superhighway engineered to slash the travel time between Melbourne and Brisbane to under 24 hours, a massive reduction from the 33 hours it can currently take. But this project is about so much more than just speed. It's about a fundamental shift in how Australia moves. Let's break down the why. First, the environmental impact. Rail transport is four times more fuel efficient than road transport. The government estimates that a single one of these double stack trains will take 110 trucks off the road. When this network is fully operational, it's projected to cut Australia's carbon emissions by 750,000 tons every single year. In a world racing to combat climate change, that is a game changer. Then, there's the economic ripple effect. This isn't just a line between two capital cities, it's a lifeline for regional Australia. The route intentionally passes through key agricultural and mining hubs like Parks, Narromine, and Toowoomba. This will connect farmers and businesses directly to major ports, opening up new trade opportunities and boosting local economies. We're already seeing the impact, with over 6,200 jobs created and billions in contracts awarded many to local and First Nations businesses. Of course, building a 1,600-kilometer steel artery across three states is one of the most complex engineering feats the nation has ever attempted. The project is divided into 13 distinct sections, each with its own unique challenges. In Victoria, the work is mostly about upgrades. Engineers are reinforcing existing bridges, modifying platforms, and even lowering tracks under existing highways, like the Murray Valley Highway, to make room for the six-book five-meter high double-stack trains. But as the route moves into New South Wales, the scale explodes. The section between Narromine and Narrabri is a 300-kilometer stretch of entirely new railway being built from scratch. This one section alone requires constructing 75 new bridges and viaducts, cutting straight through the landscape. And then the line reaches Queensland. This is where the engineering gets truly spectacular. To cross the formidable Toowoomba Range, the project requires tunnel boring machines to carve a path through the mountain, a hugely expensive and complex part of the build that makes up a significant portion of the project's cost. The line then has to navigate one of the most flood-prone areas in the country, the Condamine River floodplain, requiring extensive modeling to ensure the railway can withstand extreme weather. What's fascinating, though, is that this modern marvel is built on an idea that's over a century old. Plans for an inland railway date all the way back to the late 19th and early 20th centuries. But back when Australia became a commonwealth in 1901, the individual states had their own conflicting priorities and, believe it or not, even different rail gauges. The idea just couldn't get traction. Then came the World Wars, which diverted all resources. And as the 20th century progressed, the rise of the automobile and the trucking industry pushed the nation's focus firmly onto building roads. The inland route was all but forgotten. That is, until the early 2000s, when the strain on the road network became impossible to ignore. In 2017, the federal government finally committed serious funding and the 100-year-old dream was reborn as a national priority. But just because the project is finally underway, 
doesn't mean the path has been smooth. The biggest headline has been the cost. What was once an $8.4 billion project has seen its budget balloon to a staggering $31 billion. This massive cost overrun triggered an independent review in 2022, which revealed significant management and oversight issues. The result, the government has been forced to reset, prioritizing the project in stages. The southern section from Beverage in Victoria to Parks in New Southview is now the main focus. With a target of 2027, while the more complex northern extension to Brisbane has been put on hold pending further planning. And the challenges aren't just financial. A project of this magnitude inevitably cuts through diverse landscapes, private properties, and sensitive environmental areas. In New South Wales, the route through the Pilliga Forest has sparked controversy with environmental groups and Aboriginal land councils, who have raised concerns about the impact on wildlife and cultural heritage. Balancing national progress with local community rights and environmental conservation remains one of the project's most difficult tightropes to walk. So, where does that leave the inland rail? It's at a critical juncture. It's more expensive, more complex, and more controversial than anyone first imagined. But the need for it has only grown stronger. The inland rail is more than just tracks and tunnels. It's a bet on Australia's future. It's a commitment to greener logistics, a more balanced national economy, and a solution to the tyranny of distance that has defined the continent for centuries. If it can overcome its own monumental challenges, this steel spine won't just change how Australia moves freight. It will reshape the nation itself.